Hey y'all, Dixie here. Today I want to go over my favorite sleeping pads for 2021. First, let's start off with my favorite budget sleeping pad, and that is the Sleep and Go Camping Sleeping Pad that you can get on Amazon. If you're just getting started into backpacking and you don't want to invest a ton of money, or if you've got a son, daughter, niece, nephew, and scouts, this would probably be a great option because it only costs $40 and it weighs 14.5 ounces so that's a pretty good weight for a beginner sleeping pad not to mention it has a lifetime guarantee so once you invest that initial 40 dollars if something happens then you can always get it replaced this is a sleeping pad that i carried with me last summer when i was on the pine mountain trail and I found it pretty comfortable. I was actually surprised how much I liked that sleeping pad just because it was so budget friendly and sometimes budget friendly gear isn't the most comfortable gear. The sleeping pad only has a thickness of two inches. I'm used to pads that are a little bit thicker, but I still slept very comfortably on the sleeping pad. My favorite sleeping pad for colder temperatures or the winter months is the Thermarest Neo Air X Therm sleeping pad. When I first planned my trek on the Pinhoti Trail, I did not expect that I would be out there in the winter months. So I ended up having to do a little gear switch out for some warmer stuff. And when I was trying to decide on a sleeping pad, I dialed in on the Neo Air X Therm because it had a wonderful warmth to weight ratio. It's got an R value of 6.9 and weighs 15 ounces. For under a pound, I got a full length sleeping pad that has an R value of 6.9. And if you're not familiar with R values, that's just the value that's assigned to kind of represent how much a sleeping pad will insulate you from the ground. So the higher the R value, the warmer the sleeping pad. And it's recommended for three season weather that you have a pad with an R value of at least a two and then something for sure warmer for the winter months. I absolutely loved the X Therm. It slept comfortably. It did a good job of helping add some warmth to my sleep system. And I like the new valve system that Thermarest has implemented on their sleeping pads. I assume it's across the board. It just makes it easier to blow up so that you're not having to kind of race the air. You know, as you're pushing air in, if you take a breath, some comes out it eliminates all of that. It also comes with a pump sack if that's something that you're interested in. To me, that just takes too much fiddling around. So I prefer to blow it up without that and I don't even tote it on trail. The only thing that I didn't love about the Neo Air X Therm is that it is a pricey sleeping pad. It cost me $220, which is the most expensive sleeping pad that I've ever had, but it did its job and it did it well. And I know a lot of you who are familiar with the customer service debacle I had with Thermarest in the past are probably thinking, what, you're still using Thermarest pads? Well, they make the best pads, in my opinion, in the world of hiking and backpacking. So I just make sure that I purchase their products from a place like REI who will back it for up to a year, whether it's used or not. And if REI doesn't have a product available, then I try to find another company who will at least honor it for 30 days or so. And my favorite all around sleeping pad for when I'm going out on a backpacking trip is the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. This sleeping pad has been my go-to for thousands of miles. I carried it with me starting in the New Jersey area during my through hike of the Appalachian Trail and then the entire Pacific Crest Trail and Continental Divide Trail. I found it to be a pretty durable inflatable sleeping pad. I know that that's one of people's biggest fears with transitioning to an inflatable sleeping pad is that it's going to go flat and leave you sleeping on the ground for a stretch. But I have to say that the Neo Air X Lite for as lightweight as it is, is a pretty durable pad. I have popped it before, but both times it was my mistake. The first time I was setting up on some brushy stuff like a very small bush in the dark and couldn't really see what I was doing. And then the second time I set up on an out of commission gravel road, so it popped on a piece of gravel. So of course with inflatable sleeping pads, you have to be somewhat mindful of where you're setting up your tent. I mean, you wanna do that to help protect your tent anyway, but I will say that those two instances when I popped my sleeping pad, it was easy 
easily repairable in the field and all of Thermarest sleeping pads come with an in the field patch kit. And after I popped my sleeping pad, I was a little bit worried that it would continue to leak or it would have a slow leak, you know, before too long, but it actually didn't. And I continued to use both of those sleeping pads for a thousand plus miles after I'd popped it. There are several different versions of the X-Lite available. They've got a small slash short pad. That's the one that I use. And then I just put my pack under the bottom of my legs to help support it while I'm sleeping. But I understand that not everybody would be comfortable like that. So they also make the regular length and the long length. My short sleeping pad only weighs eight ounces. So that works very well for me since I tote a lot of weight in camera equipment. The X-Lite is two and a half inches thick and it has an R value of 4.2. So it's a pretty good all around sleeping pad. The typical cons associated with the sleeping pad is one, a lot of people complain that it's a noisy pad. It just sounds crunchy and like they're sleeping on a bag of Fritos. I haven't had an issue with that. It doesn't bother me, but it might be something that you wanna check out in person at an REI or other outfitter if you think that that might be a deal breaker for you. Next, they are a bit expensive depending on the size of the sleeping pad you want. It can run anywhere from $150 to a little over $200. And finally, some people complain that the X-Lite is too high because of that two and a half inch thickness, especially if you prefer a wider sleeping pad, this might not work for you. So if you find yourself lying on a sleeping pad that's high up and it feels like your arms are falling off, then you might wanna think about a different sleeping pad because I know several people like my mom and Marty who have complained about that specific issue with the Neo Air X-Lite. Just a side note on this, mom and Marty both ended up switching from the Neo Air X-Lite and they both went to the Sea to Summit insulated air pad. They thought it was very comfortable. That air pad is only two inches thick. So it doesn't give you quite the same feeling of being too high off the ground. So it's easier to stay on the sleeping pad. And mom went with the regular width. Marty got the large to give him a little bit more room because he's more broad in the shoulders than I am or my mom is. The price range of that pad is $140 to $160 and 16 to 21 ounces is the weight range, of course, depending on what size sleeping pad you get. Another thing I want to mention before I go, because I know some of y'all will probably ask about this, and that's the big Agnes AXL sleeping pad that I used while I was on the Penhody Trail. It was okay. It was nice to have a full length sleeping pad that was a comparable weight to my short Neo Air X-Lite. Uh, it was nice having an actual pad under my legs. I was really looking forward to testing it out, but unfortunately it got a slow leak pretty early on. And then I started getting into some colder temperatures and I wanted a warmer R value in a sleeping pad. So I ended up just switching out to the Neo Air X-Therm. I haven't had the chance yet to submerge the sleeping pad and see if I can find where that leak is coming from. So if it's something that I did and punctured it, or if it's something with the design and how it was manufactured. And I haven't contacted Big Agnes to talk to them about a replacement because I haven't seen if it's something that can be patched or if it needs to be replaced. So I didn't get a great test on that pad. Again, it was okay. It wasn't the most comfortable sleeping pad I had ever been on, but it did get the slow leak. So at first I found myself when I was sitting on my pad in the morning, I noticed that my hip or my elbow would go into the ground while I was getting ready and stuff. But I ended up after a while having to reinflate it in the middle of the night while I was sleeping. And that's the point where I was like, okay, I've got to switch out because I'm getting too cold at night anyway. But anyway, that's why it didn't make the cut. And if I end up trying it out again in the future, I'll let y'all know. All right, y'all, well, that is all I have for you today on sleeping pads and which ones are my favorites. I'd like to hear about your favorites in the comments below, what sleeping pad you go to and why. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe before you go and we will see y'all next time.